Hello, this is Professor James Strickler, and this is a course in American government. This lesson is from Unit 12 about the Georgia Constitution. It's Lesson 12 about Georgia's governor's powers. In this lesson, you'll learn about the governor's powers in the state of Georgia. I could list them all here on this slide, but you'll get to them eventually. This lesson is one of a series of lessons where we are going through the Constitution of the state of Georgia article by article. This lesson will be drawn from Article 5 about the executive branch. We're going to be talking about 10 different powers that the governor of the state of Georgia has. We'll list five of them on this slide and then we'll eventually get another slide to list the other five. The first of those powers listed in the Constitution is that the governor will be the chief executive of the state. This means that he is the chief administrator to carry out the laws. Okay, so we put that on our list, that he is the chief executive. The next power is uh, described in the Constitution where it says that the governor will take care that laws are faithfully executed. Now, at first that sounds a little bit redundant, like it's the first power about him being the chief executive. Matter of fact, in the United States Constitution, these ideas are put together. Here they're listed under separate paragraphs. Now, notice how this sentence finishes up though. It says, and he shall be the, the conservator of peace throughout the state. There's actually a subheading above this particular paragraph in the state constitution, which talks about law enforcement. And so you can understand that it has a slightly different attitude than the, the first power that we mentioned. The first power of chief executive is more about just doing administrative stuff. This one about being faithfully executing the laws and conserving the peace is more about his position of a, as an enforcer of what's supposed to be done in the state. So we'll describe that as his power to conserve peace, among other things, to supervise law enforcement. The next power listed in the Georgia Constitution for the governor is that he'll be the commander in chief of the military forces of this state. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Georgia has a military? Yes, it does. It's sometimes, well, I should say, it is generally known by the misleading term, the Georgia National Guard. Matter of fact, I shouldn't even say generally known, that's its official title. Now, why do you call a state military by the name National Guard? Well, this was something that was done when the uh, state militias, each state had its own sort of militia, its own military force of some sort, were nationalized. A law passed by the United States Congress brought them all under the umbrella of the President of the United States as Commander-in-Chief, where potentially, if need be, he can call up these local state troops to serve the entire country. And that has happened. In the wars with Iraq and Afghanistan, it was not uncommon for National Guard units to be called to serve there in those wars. But in between that sort of thing, when the President of the United States is not calling these troops up to help with a national cause, they remain under the command of the governor of the state. Now, the governor of the state could use them to defend the state if it ever came to that. If some invading troops came in, he could call up the National Guard. He can use them at times to maintain the peace, such as through riot control, stuff like that. Sometimes National Guard troops have been used for that sort of thing. Where they're most commonly used is in some sort of disaster relief. There is some big event, like say a flood, and the governor's got to get a bunch of people out there throwing sandbags. Well, where's he going to get a bunch of people all of a sudden? He can call up the National Guard troops in his state to do that sort of thing. So there's the governor's third power, commander-in-chief. Which, let me be clear about this, this isn't just something that Georgia does. There are these National Guard troops in all 50 states that are commanded by the governor of each of them. The governor's next power is the veto power. Now, we've talked about this in detail previously as we talked about the legislative process, so we don't need to spend a bunch of time on it. This is just the opportunity for the governor to reject a bill that he doesn't agree with. Right, we got one more power to put on this slide after the veto power. 
And that concerns the governor issuing writs of election to fill vacancies in the Senate or the House. What this is about is if a vacancy occurs. In other words, somebody retires or dies or resigns or whatever it is, and they leave an opening in the House of Representatives or the Senate in between elections, the governor has a responsibility to call a special election to then fill that seat. So there's the fifth of the governor's 10 powers listed in the Georgia Constitution that he can call special elections. Now let's get another blank slide to fill in the other five of the governor's 10 powers. The next thing, next power he's given is that he can recommend uh, measures, in other words, legislative uh, ideas to the General Assembly. Matter of fact, he's told that he should regularly give a speech about the state of the state, and as part of that, he should make recommendations. So the governor is given an official duty. This is an informal power that the President of the United States uses during his State of the Union addresses to propose things that the legislature should do. This is an officially recognized duty of the governor in the state of Georgia. So the sixth power that the governor is given in the state constitution is to recommend legislation. The next power given is that the governor can call the General Assembly into special session. This is an idea that, again, we mentioned back when we were talking about the United States Congress, because the president has a similar power there. If the legislature is not in session, which is actually common here in the state of Georgia, since they can only serve 40 days out of every year, and some issue comes up that the governor feels needs to be addressed by legislation, he can call the legislators to come back for a temporary time period to deal with that problem. So that's his seventh power, to call special sessions of the General Assembly. The governor's next power is to fill vacancies within the executive branch. If some sort of public official um, has to leave office, they die, they resign, whatever, and that position is open, the governor can fill it temporarily to, fi to uh, fill out the unexpired term until somebody else can get elected to that position or be chosen in some way. So, governor fills vacancies. Well, what else can he do? He also is given the power to appoint people to various offices. Now, not those other offices in the plural executive that get elected separately from him, but there are other positions, either created by um, pieces of legislation that are passed by the General Assembly or by the Constitution itself, where the governor may be assigned to appoint people as an original matter. Not just fill a vacancy temporarily because someone died, but appoint somebody to that position to begin with. So there's his ninth power to make appointments. The last power the governor specifically listed in the Georgia Constitution is that he can require reports from employees within the executive branch. If he wants to know what they're doing with their job, he can officially require them to make a written report to him about what they are doing. And that's the last of the governor's 10, ten powers listed in the Georgia Constitution. Now let's review what we learned in this lesson. We're not going to go through all 10 of these powers, but just hit some examples. What military does the Georgia governor command? Does he command the Georgia National Guard? Does he command Kings Bay Submarine Base? Does he command Georgia State Police? Or does he command Moody Air Force Base? The military that the governor of Georgia commands is the Georgia National Guard. What elections does the governor call? Does he call general elections? County elections for county and city officials? Does he call elections for electors for president of the United States? Or does he call elections to fill vacancies in the General Assembly, in the House or the Senate? The governor is authorized by the state constitution to call uh, special elections to fill vacancies in the General Assembly. From whom may the governor of the state of Georgia require reports? Does he require them from the Georgia's congressional delegation? In other words, those people that get elected to go back to Washington, D.C.? Can he require them from the General, General Assembly committees? Can he require reports from the Supreme Court justices of the state of Georgia? Or does he have the power to require reports from executive branch officials? 
the governor can require reports from executive branch officials. All right, that completes this lesson. The next lesson will also be from Unit 12. It'll be Lesson 13 about Georgia's judicial branch.